Narcissists are very creative. Yes, they can definitely drive you crazy. They can be very abusive. They can be very traumatic. They can literally make your life a living hell, but they're definitely creative, especially when it comes to avoiding answering your questions. And that's what I'm going to get into in this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the ways that they are definitely super creative when it comes to avoiding answering your questions. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I'm an attorney. I've been actually recognized as one of the best lawyers in America by U.S. News. And I have written a couple of best-selling books, including Negotiate Like You Matter. And I have another one that is available in pre-order now called Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. And I help you disarm narcissists. I help you shift the power dynamic when it comes to narcissists. I help you take back your power. If you are so ready to take back your power, you want to get your freedom when it comes to narcissists, then I can help you do that. And in fact, I even have something special for you. I have a, a little freebie for you, but first I want you to make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell because I release brand new videos every single day for you because I am on a mission to help you get where you want to go. So that freebie for you, you can go to disarmthenarc.com and get free phrases to disarm narcissists. And today we are focusing on creative ways that narcissists avoid answering your questions when it comes time to talk to them. And why do they do this? Well, they do this because they don't want to have to take responsibility for anything. And there's also another hidden reason for it. They also enjoy manipulating you, making you squirm, driving you crazy. They get supply from that. And remember, supply is anything that feeds their ego. It's to feed that emptiness inside of them. It's that empty black hole that can never be filled. And they want you to fill it, fill that void inside of them where they're trying to get some feeling of value where, you know, they have to get all of their feeling of value from external sources. They don't inherently feel like they have any value, even though all human beings inherently have value. And now this is not a question about whether, which maybe, maybe, maybe it is a void answering question about whether too, depending on how surly they feel that particular day. But this is questions that, you know, you're trying to get an answer out of them that they may be having to take responsibility for something, or you want to have a serious conversation about something. You might want to talk about feelings, or you want attention for yourself, or you want to talk about something that they don't want to talk about. So you are coming to them and you're saying, hey, I want to ask you about this. I want to ask you why you didn't accomplish this task that you said that you were going to accomplish. Why didn't you mow the lawn when you said that you were going to or if it's a work related thing, why didn't you, you know, follow through on doing this project that you said you were going to do? Or did you do the project that you said you were going to do? These are the types of questions that you end up asking them. And what is the first type of thing that you're going to get from them? The first type of thing is what I like to refer to as projection and deflection. Project, deflect, project, deflect. Okay. It's either your fault or it's somebody else. Or like, I'm um, just, just get it off of me. It ain't over here. Yeah. I like to think of that little, I don't know what it was like a fable or whatever it was. The, the little red hen, not I, not I, one me. What they will try to do is 
they will try to do it. And there's a lot of different ways the projection and deflection kind of comes up. They're so creative when it comes to projection and deflection. So one of the ways that they project and deflect is they will start attacking how you ask the question. So if you ask them a question about, did you turn off the car when you came in the house or something? I don't know. Why, why didn't you get the car washed? Let's make it that. Why didn't you get the car washed on the way home when you said that you were going to? And they'll, they'll say something like, why are you bringing that up now? Something like that, where instead of having the conversation about that, now you're having a conversation about the timing of why you brought that up. So you can't get to the conversation about the thing. You got to have a conversation about the timing. And then you'll, you, you get off into this tangent about that. And you say, well, either, well, I'm bringing it up now because blah, 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 whatever. And you go off into that side road. Or you say, well, because now is a good time or, or whatever it is. And you try to get back to the thing. And then they'll say, well, now you're yelling and you'll, you'll be like, I, I'm not yelling. I didn't raise my voice at all. I, I just wanted to know why you didn't get the car washed on your way home. Like you said, you were going to, and then they'll say, oh, you're, you're yelling at me. I can't, I can't have a conversation with you when you're yelling at me. And then, and then it's like, I'm not yelling. And, and so you got to get about that. And then they'll say, well, now you're interrupting me. I never interrupted you. Well, okay. Now it's, now you got to get through that tangent. So you can never get to the freaking point of what it is that you're trying to have a conversation about. So that's one way that they'll do it. So that's part of projection and deflection. Again, part of deflect, deflection, projection and deflection might be, why didn't you get your car, the car washed on the way home? And they'll just say, I did. And you'll be like, well, but I know that you didn't because I can see I'm looking at the thing and it's, it's not, it's not washed. It's still dirty. What, what are you talking about? I, I didn't think that you meant this and, you know, and then it's, you, you're having a conversation about something else. And, and, and again, you never get to the point about that. It's something else. Again, another tangent. And then it's, what are you spying on me? Or don't you trust me? How come you're controlling me? I said that I would do it and I will. I don't know why you're on my back. And it's this sort of thing. No one else is on my back the way you are. You're treating me like a child. You know, so it's it's this sort of, and now it's your fault. You're the one. You're the one who's the problem. And projection and deflection. Again, it's all on you. So, and then the other kind of thing that they'll do is, is the projection and deflection sort of thing is you'll, you'll be trying to have a conversation with them and you're talking and you finally get their attention and they'll be like, oh my God, I, I just I had a pain in my neck or something. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm really, I'm trying to listen to you, but. Oh, yeah, go on. I just was distracted for a second there, but I'm really trying to listen to what you're saying. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What were you saying about that? I, I'm definitely listening. But oh, I just I just I thought I just heard a sound outside or something. But I, I was listening to you. But yeah, go ahead. What were you saying? You know, so they're kind of like changing the subject, but also listening and sort of deflecting it off but yes oh, oh yeah i'm listening mm -hmm. what we saying again Ho hold on one second yeah, yeah i'm here but right what what we saying no oh, you know can, can we come back to this you know i want to make sure that we are listening to this but we'll come back to this 
you know, and so like kind of constantly changing the subject so that you never really get to the point again. So there's that. And th so they sort of avoid having the conversation there too. And then again, also part of projection and deflection, you'll say, why are you so angry or something like that? And they'll just say, I'm not when they just completely raged at you. And then th they just completely avoid it that way. So that's another way of projection and deflection. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways that they project and deflect. It's all part of the same thing. So that's number one. Number two is full on rage. You, you just, you try to ask them about something like I saw credit card charges that looked really suspicious. I want to talk to you about these. What are these extra charges? You know, how come you're charging all these extra things? Why uh, are you all of a sudden going out so often at night? What are you doing? You know, whatever it is that you want to ask them about. And they just flip out on you, just rage at you. You are so controlling. You're just out of, con you're just out of control. You're just nosy, maybe just f-bombs in your face it's none of your business you just have to know everything you're just absolutely insane you're delusional just they just go ballistic on you so badly that you just are like i'm just okay fine i'm not asking any questions so that that way they avoid having to answer any questions because you, they just raged out and flipped out so badly that you didn't have to answer. They didn't have to answer anything and you, you're definitely not going to ask again. So that's, that's another way that they avoid answering the questions. Very creative and they didn't have to answer the question. Number three is they guilt trip. They completely guilt trip you by going, oh, I can't believe you're asking me about this. You're putting me in this position and you know how hard I work for you. And especially, you know, how sick I am and you know, the state that I'm in and you're doing this to me and you know how traumatized I've gotten over this and you're yelling and I can't take this. You know what it does to my health and to my heart. And, and I can't believe you would accuse me of this and you wouldn't trust me. You, you, you know, all that kind of thing. Like they, they, you know, they have become the victim. They try to make you feel guilty and they swap it around so that you're actually ending up apologizing to them somehow. And that that's how it becomes. So that's the next one. The next one is they just might full on ignore you. It might just be like, okay, whatever. And they might just ghost you. They might just ignore you. They just aren't, they'll just avoid answering your question by just not talking to you and just completely ignoring you for, days on end, they, they're just going to punish you for, for asking the question and, and they're, you know, they'll certainly not answer your questions either. So that's number four and you don't have to take it. And I want you to put that in the comments, not taking it. I'm not taking it and you can move on. By the way, you can make a choice. You can decide that this is not your life. You can make a choice that something can be different, that it can be different and it will be different. And I've helped many thousands of people make it be different. And, you know, before we get to the last one, I want you to know that it can be different for you and you can join my free private support group with Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zong, which is my, my free private Facebook group. And if you need additional support, I have a sponsor here on this channel, which is for therapy 
for online therapy, which is BetterHelp. And you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zong to access that. We receive commissions on that. It does not cost you one single penny extra. It is so that I, I mention it here only because I want you to have access to help and support that we trust. Okay. And I want you to get the help you need. Don't do this alone. Do not do this alone. All right. So those are the things that they do so far. One through four. Let's get to the last one. The last one. You know what it is. You know what it is. Lying and denying. They're, they're tried and true. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know who it is. Maybe it was you. Must have been you. You must be accusing of the, me of the things that you're doing because it wasn't me. Maybe it was the neighbor. Maybe it was somebody else, but it wasn't me. They'll just full on just lie about it, it you know, and or they'll just say they did do it when they didn't do it, whatever it is. But narcissists lie all the time and that becomes your leverage. And that's what I teach you how to use in my slave program. That's what I teach you how to create strategy around in my slave program, you know, that you give them enough rope, they hang themselves with it. And that will help you in the end. And that's how you end up breaking free. So make sure that you have subscribed to this channel. You hit that notification bell. There is hope for you. There is hope to break free. You are valuable. You matter. You can do this and I can help you. So make sure that you have joined our community and gotten your free phrases for disarming narcissists at disarmthenarc.com and that you have subscribed here and hit that notification bell. And the next video that I want you to watch is the secrets that narcissists fear that you know, the secrets that narcissists fear that you know, and we are going to go watch that together. It is going to empower you even more. So let's go check that out. All right. And I will see you there.